Yo, 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 what's up, everybody? And welcome to the new episode of the Atlanta Braves franchise. So, I'm sorry, it's been a while. Um, I started college, so I'm just transitioning right now and figuring out, uh, you know, how I can post videos, you know, like, what kind of schedule I want to get on. But it's a third week now, so I definitely think I'm well-adjusted and can start churning out these videos. But, uh, yeah, there's a lineup for the first game. Um, a little bit of a uh, highlights game I'm going to show to start it off. You see Gio Gonzalez um, starting here for the Nationals. The Nationals still without a loss here in this season. Uh, they beat us in the, the season opener, and um, they're still undefeated after a second series. So here's Gordon Beckham with a hit and run on. Um, Gordon Beckham decides as a swing. Um, I was originally going to try to do a hit and run. So Ender Enciarte in with a stolen base, and now Gordon Beckham. Hits this one deep to right field, and the right fielder can't crowd it in. Ender and Ciarte was holding up at second, so he's only going to get to third on the double. But a good hit there by Gordon Beckham to uh, put the Braves in a good position in the first inning. Um, that was actually Gordon's first hit um, of the season so far. So uh, I'd like to see that as Kelly Johnson um, is into the game. Freddie Freeman not uh, playing this game. And he's going to hit a ground ball to second base, and that's going to be enough for Ender and Ciarte to score. So the Braves took a quick 1-0 lead as Bud Norris. Um, not the best start, his first start of the season, but um, the second one here, he definitely was a lot better. He also had the help of some good defense. You see a play there by Eric Ibar, and uh, Norris was liking it. You know, if you're a pitcher and your shortstop's making those kind of plays, uh, you got to appreciate it. Uh, later on, a couple innings later, Tyler Flowers hits in an RBI, and that was his second of the year. And that puts the Braves up 2 to nothing against the Nats. But very quickly, later on, Bryce Harper, his 100th career home run, a two-run shot, will tie this game up right off the flagpole. It's so crazy that a guy as young as Bryce Harper, I mean, personally, I remember when he was first coming into the league, all the hype surrounding him, um, the 19-year-old um, prospect, and uh, already 100 home runs and back-to-back uh, -back games for home runs by Bryce. But the Braves did fight right back. There's the Eric Ibar ribbon one right down the right field line, and he batted in a run that way. So now the Braves are up 3-2 to two in the sixth inning. Jim Johnson coming into the eighth with a one-run lead. And, um, yeah, there's Ryan Zimmerman running the bases. Zimmerman, the veteran, the one of the more recognizable Washington Nationals. He had a two-run shot of his own. So now the Nats are going to take the lead. All of their runs scored by two two-run shots. Um, that was already his third of the season. The Nationals, they don't hit the highest average, but they sure do hit a lot, a lot of home runs, and they've already hit a lot in this series. It's um, it's his second of the series. And uh, Jim Johnson, I don't really know what his role might be this year, but so far he hasn't uh, been the most impressive. Jonathan Papelbon gets the save as we weren't able to rally back in the ninth. Eric Ibar was leading the team offensively with two hits and an RBI. And we actually out hit the Nats in this game. Um, Ender and Ciarte, Ibar both collecting two hits. And Hunter Cervenka, Alexio Gondo did pitch scoreless, even though Jim Johnson gave up the two runs. But here's our last chance to get a win from the Nationals. And, you know, if you want to wonder why the Nationals have been so good, you saw the average. It wasn't that high. And now you see their production and RBIs and home runs. We, we still are without someone without, you know, seven RBIs. And they have a guy with six and a guy with ten and Bryce Harper and, Jordan and uh, Ryan Zimmerman. And just their ERA, you saw there as well, is just another reason why they're such a strong team. And uh, Tanner Rourke, Williams Perez, let's get it. And there you see the numbers for the first start for Tanner Rourke. He threw a complete game shutout his first his first outing. And uh, there's the starting lineup for the Atlanta Braves. Ender Enciarte, Malik Smith, Marquecas, Freeman, Ibar, Oliveira, Brzezinski, Jace Peterson, and of course, Williams Perez is the pitcher. We're going to jump to the third inning. The first two were pretty uneventful for both pitchers. They both 
pitched two scoreless innings, giving up one hit. And here's Williams Perez, a good chance to move Jace Peterson over to second after the walk. And it's a good bunt. There was definitely a chance to get out Peterson at second with a good throw. And uh, the first baseman overran it so much that even Perez was safe. So instead of an error, it's going to be counted as a hit. So William Perez gets his first hit of the campaign. And now Ender and Ciarte is going to hit one to the first baseman. And he's easily going to beat out the pitcher Rourke at first. So it's going to be a fielder's choice. And then Malik Smith up next hits one well. And that's going to be an RBI for Malik. His RBI, his average has dropped a little bit since... Um, well, the big splash he made when he first got caught up. So it's good to see him getting an RBI there. And then Nick Markagas hits one to left field. And the runner, Malik Smith, is going to be able to run over to third. So still good position here for the Braves. And the pitching coach is going to check on Tanner Rourke as he's starting to be a little spotty. The Braves are definitely um, starting to show that they do have some offensive game. Freddie Freeman who as well has been struggling. He's going to hit one well all the way to the warning track, and this is easily going to be a sack fly. You don't need you know, that much of a fly ball to score Malik Smith from third regardless. But good hit there by Freddie Freeman in an RBI. And now Williams Perez, who had a pretty solid first, uh, first start, six and a third, only giving up one run. He's going to come in, and there's the lineup for the Nationals. Rendon, Worth, Harper, Zimmerman, Danny Espinoza, Ramos, Stephen Drew, the veteran over at second, Michael Taylor, the center fielder, and, of course, Stan O'Rourke batting ninth. Here's a full count against Jason Worth and Williams Perez. That was actually his first walk of the year. He's going to pitch it a little too high. And now Bryce Harper, who has been dangerous this series, but he's over one today. And Williams Perez full count on Harper as well, but he's going to get Harper to strike out there on the changeup up high. So, so far, Williams Perez scoreless through three innings, limiting the Nationals to only one hit. And top of the 4-3-0 count, veteran catcher, Brzezinski, you like to see him getting on base with a walk. He, uh, he's having been having a little bit of trouble the first couple weeks of the season getting on base. And Jace Peterson, who walked earlier, is up now 3-1 count for Jace, and he is going to draw his second walk of the day, the third for Tanner Rourke already. So he looks a little spotty in the third inning, but now it's definitely um, looking like he's losing some control. Williams Perez has a another so-so bunt, but they're just going to get the automatic out for Perez. So now two men in scoring position for two with two outs. For Ender and Ciarte, and Ender's going to hit it over to the shortstop, but Ender is going to be safe. Danny Espinoza was a little too casual on that throw, and that's going to be an infield hit and an RBI for the leadoff man, Ender and Ciarte. That's what you like to see there from the Atlanta Braves, hustle. They're definitely not a team that's going to hit a bunch of home runs and bat 300, but they do have a lot of hustle, and that's one thing I really like about this team. And after that... They're going to lift Tanner Rourke, who had a phenomenal start, um, his first start of the season, but here against the Braves, <laughs> it, ironically enough, one of the worst uh, offensive teams in baseball. Um, he's going to be out, but here's Matt Belize. But, uh, no, sorry, not Belize, Belisle, and Matt Belisle is going to get Eric Ibar to fly out with two outs to Worth, and now going back to the next inning. Well, Williams Perez continues his show. Ground ball there to Jace Peterson. And this just shows Williams Perez's dominance. Here's Wilson Ramos with two outs in the fourth. And Ramos hits it to Marcakis. And that's going to... No, it's not going to end the inning. Listen, guys, I'm getting tired of this Illuminati stuff. This is the third time in this series. We're not even on episode 10 yet. We're averaging, like, an Illuminati every three games. I, I really can't handle it. Um, if you guys remember, this happened two other times in this series. Uh, one of the Illuminati was for us, and the other was against us. But um, it's really starting to tick me off, guys. I think I'm going to start an Illuminati counter. 
and uh, see how many times they're screwing us over. It's, it's two Illuminatis against one Illuminati right now. But I'm just really getting tired of it. And there you see Mark Kakis. Um, you know, after the Illuminati, he just was a little shaken up there. Um, he probably didn't have to die for that. I probably could have just allowed the hit and held the runner at third. But I decided to die for it. And uh, if you can see, I really overdived it. I, like, I really, not dived it. I really overdove there. So, um, the Nats did put up one run, although it does go as unearned as Mark Kakis, ironically. He's the next batter up, and he's going to be out on the play. A hard grounder to Steven Drew, the second baseman. Man, I hate the Illuminati. Like, man, I'm, just, I'm getting tired of it. But Bryce Harper recorded a double in the bottom of the sixth. And the next batter is going to hit it over to Jace Peterson. And that's going to move Harper over to third. So now a man in scoring position with only one out. But it's going to be a hit regardless. So Harper's going to score. And now only a two-run lead for the Nats. As Bryce Harper continues to be a pest in this series. But Williams Perez with two outs. He is going to clean up the inning. So that was actually the first earned run for Williams Perez. Uh, he has allowed two though, however. And the Nats only held to four hits. Perez has been doing his thing. But the next inning, I do decide to bring in the bullpen. And I can tell you guys, um, after this, um, the offense is over for the Braves. It is all up to the bullpen. They're not scoring any more runs. Hunter Cervinka delivered a very nice bottom of the seventh. There you see the another ground ball. Jace Peterson's been getting a lot of action this, this game. And it is up to the Braves bullpen. Next, it's Alexi Ogando. Usually the fireman, but I'm going to use him here in the eighth inning because Jason Grilly and Jim Johnson haven't been really doing their role the best. But here's Alexi Ogando. He's going to walk Ryan Zimmerman, who homered in the game just previous to this one. But right after him, Danny Espinoza, the shortstop. He's going to strike out on the fastball inside. But right after that, Ogando allowed a double. So with two men in scoring position, this is a very pivotal, pivotal, yeah, I can't talk, pivotal at bat. But there you see the passed ball by the veteran catcher, A.J. Perzinski, and he shovel tosses it to Alexi Ogando, and he's going to tag out Ryan Zimmerman. So the lead is still two runs, and now it's all up to the closer. Aroidus Vizcaino. He has been very solid so far this season. Five scoreless innings, six Ks. Still has not allowed a hit against lefties. And here's his first opponent on the mound here. It's Steven Drew, the veteran second baseman. And he's going to get Drew to strike out in the dirt. Throw over to first, Freddie Freeman. And that's going to be out number one. Good start for Freddie. I mean, Aroidus. <laughs> here is the second batter. It's the center fielder, Taylor. And I'll tell you what, this right here was a duel. Taylor is not usually known as the most patient guy, but here in the clutch for the Nationals, he he wasted a lot of good pitches by Aroidus. Here you see another foul ball. Aroidus just keeps putting it in, eventually knowing that he can maybe get Taylor to wear down. There was the seventh pitch of the at-bat. And then finally, with the fastball away, it's going to freeze Taylor. And that's going to be out number two. Two Ks for Aroidus. And now, the pinch hitter, Matt Den Decker, the young outfielder, 1-1 one, one count. And he's going to get Decker. They had a foul ball on the first base line. And now the Nationals are done for the first out. They still haven't lost this season. And now they have Aroidus Vizcaino. Close the game for the Braves. They win against the Nationals 4-2. What a feel-good game for the Braves. They have been struggling offensively this season thus far. They've been struggling pitching-wise, at least for the most part. But they get a good start from Williams Perez. The bullpen shuts it down in the last three innings. And that's just a really feel-good game for the Atlanta Braves. Um, there you see Ender Enciarte contributing with two hits. Malik Smith, Mark Kakis, Freddie Freeman with a hit as well as, as well as Perzinski um, getting the walk. And that's just what you like to see from the offense. Um, only seven hits, but we were able to scratch together four runs. Um, of course, a sack fly by Freddie as well. 
and like I said, very good job by the pitching staff. Perez put up a very solid start, six innings, and of course the bullpen. So I hope you guys liked that episode. Um, we are now sitting uh, three wins thus far, but you know, at, at least the Nationals are no longer undefeated, so we'll take it. So the future of this series, guys, I think um, we played a lot in April, and I think I want to play maybe three games a month. Uh, so I'm gonna play. A, I'm still gonna play a decent amount of games left in April. Maybe a game or two of Miami, um, the Boston series. I'll play a game or two the Mets series, especially Boston because Big Poppy's retiring. But that's probably what I'm gonna do. So after that, it's gonna be a lot less, um, a lot more time passing in between games. So yeah, that's the plan. But um, I hope you guys liked the episode, like I said, and uh, drop a like, leave some feedback, tell me what you guys are thinking, and uh, catch you guys later. Peace out.